So yes, so I'll be presenting on uh, work with Donald Brain's program and about evaluation of French information resources. Um, so to set the scene, uh, understandably, the internet is a very accessible uh, source of information. However, this is not always uh, useful or understandable. Um, this is particularly important given that uh, six in ten Australians don't have the adequate literacy skills to meet the minimum requirements of everyday life. Uh, so this includes understanding public health information, uh, navigating employment and other enforcement areas of living. If we compound this with the fact that 90% uh, of people with brain tumour have a, at least one form of cognitive impairment which can affect uh, memory, attention or language, it becomes really obvious that uh, these issues combined with generally low literacy can make reading and understanding material substantially more difficult. Uh, so therefore, it's important that information for this uh, population accommodates for these common deficits and uh, literacy levels. So, the goal of our research was to evaluate the extent to which readily available uh, brain tumour resources are readable, understandable, and useful. So, we measured, uh, we used a tool called the Patient Education Materials Assessment Tool to evaluate uh, understandability and actability. Understandability refers to whether a resource can be processed and explained by consumers of diverse backgrounds and health literacy levels. And actionability refers to whether a resource can tell consumers what they can do with the information presented. Uh, and for each of these, uh, understandable or actionable resource is defined as one that scores 70% or above in its respective domain. Uh, readability was also assessed, and this is uh, refers to the ease with which a reader can comprehend written text and we measured this using several online readability calculators, and it's generally measured as the required minimum required reading grade to understand the material. And we want this to be no greater than grade eight uh, to, for the majority of the population to understand the material. We also measured uh, uh, accessibility options for websites and for downloadable material, uh, information transparency, and cultural and linguistic inclusivity. And we show the metrics you can see on screen because they are the most concrete indicators uh, of accessibility and inclusivity. There's a little room for interpretation. The features are either present or they're not. So our search strategy: we selected relevant oops, uh, we selected relevant resources from the first page of Google after searching various broad search terms um, because this is similar to how patients, patients and carers would search uh, when looking for information. And this search was conducted in May of 2022. So we analysed resources from 28 organisations across four countries. Most of our resources came from Australia, uh, and we analysed a total of 352 written, written material and 25 videos. Um, so with the results, we found that generally uh, most resources, or on average, the resources are well off from the recommended benchmark. Uh, resources require, on average, at least a 10th grade reading level. Um, they generally only score about 50% for understandability and just 21% for actionability. And actionability is particularly low, uh, likely because uh, most resources just didn't have any actions at all. Um, we can also see that Australia is, on average, not much better or <coughs> different from the rest of the world. And when it comes to readability, uh, this reaches high as grade 17, which is beyond bachelor's degree level of education. Um, and this is intended for patients to understand. Uh, when it comes to our other outcomes, accessibility for websites is generally poor. Uh, they tend to not have uh, AV support, so text-to-speech, and generally don't help uh, users navigate around the website. Uh, when it comes to PDFs, they're generally tagged, which is good because it means that um, screen readers can interpret the document, uh, but none had uh, provided alternative text for images and diagrams, meaning they couldn't uh, interpret these images. Uh, when it comes to information transparency, this is generally quite poor as well, just about 30% or under 30% providing resources, about a quarter providing information on the authors, and just over half providing a publication date. And when it comes to cultural and linguistic inclusivity, less than a quarter provided translations, only 1% provided specific information uh, for cultural and linguistically diverse populations. Uh, the 1% was one New Zealand resource, which had five pages that incorporated Maori uh, language culture. So I'll provide some examples. So this is an example of quite a good resource. It provides simple sentences, a nice graphic to comment the information, and this was what it scored. So it had above the 70%, so it's considered understandable. Um, and 
below eighth grade reading level, so quite readable. Uh, but this brings up a point that uh, this is a quite a good resource, but it still doesn't have any actionability. So it, it brings up a point that I'll discuss a bit later that uh, it's important to uh, consider or to define the, the purpose of the resource. So are you aiming to educate the reader or are you trying to help them through something or to find something? This is an example of a not so ideal resource. This is genuinely intended for patients to understand. Uh, it looks like it's from a journal article. <laughs> uh, and this was its, its score. So it's 17% from extendability, no actionability, and a 16 for uh, readability. And so everyone's aware of neither of these resources are from Australia. So how do we fix this? Uh, as I said before, um, make the purpose and scope clear to set an expectation of what the resource will do, what it will cover, and whether it's relevant for the reader. Um, again, how it, providing the purpose of it. Are you educating or are you guiding people through uh, how to access certain uh, sources, uh, resources or navigate the health system? Uh, providing visual, visual cues such as high contrast colours, uh, dot points, bolding, italicising text boxes. Uh, it makes the important information really obvious. Uh, using visual aids, uh, such as images to, or, or diagrams to supplement potentially dense text, such as when it comes to anatomy, for example. Um, Audiovisual content, so text-to-speech, <coughs> videos, uh, they're just more easily digestible, um, more so than written text. Uh, including summaries to nicely wrap up a, a resource and allow the reader to know what the key takeaways are, and include actions when they're relevant. Some other considerations include uh, information for priority populations. There's not really much out there at the moment, um, and we need to make a conscious effort to make sure that they're good and effective. Uh, accessibility options again, text-to-speech, accessibility, accessibility toolbars and navigation assistance. Uh, this is particularly important in this population given the widespread deficits. And you can learn more about how we've done this uh, in the context of an online portal by looking at Bona Paris's process this evening, uh, post 35. Uh, improving the information transparency, so date of publication, uh, recent updates, date of recent updates and funny author, and a reference list. This just improves the confidence that the available information is up to date and reliable. And use, using uh, readability tools such as uh, Shell, which is a good example uh, by the Sydney Health Literacy Lab. It provides the required reading grade uh, for the material and potential areas for improvement. Uh, so where to next? So we've reviewed the available content uh, from key cancer, Australian cancer advocacy organisations and uh, provided tailored feedback and some proposed changes to improve the resources. And if you're a clinician and, if you're a clinician and you're making resources, uh, we advise that you consider what we've talked about today. And uh, if you're providing resources to patients, make a conscious effort to consider what you're actually giving them. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank the team on which I'm presenting on behalf of, uh, 